Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, it's going to be a short video. I just wanted to cover a new function I put out there earlier last week uh, with regards to how you can pad strings. I had a need uh, just to align things properly visually, uh, just to make things easier to read in one of my functions. It can also be used for creating uh, certain uh, text files and things like that. So I created a simple uh, string padding function, well, actually two different ones. And I just wanted to present them today to you in case it could be useful in some manner. So to start off, let's just take a very quick look at the uh, blog article that I have on the subject, VBA, padding a string to a desired length. So as the title implies, this works in any VBA application, not just Access. So Excel, Word, Outlook, doesn't make a difference. You can use this function. It just uses very basic core string manipulation from the VBA library. I have two functions. The first one you'll see here, string pad, pads a string uh, using a space and only a space. It also has a truncate function if your initial input exceeds the desired length. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. And then I created a second function a little further down here. And this is, it pads it, but with the character of your choice. So and if you're not wanting to pad it with a space, you want to use a hyphen or a dash or a slash or a star, well, you can specify the character to be used. So we're going to look at both of these functions briefly. Uh, let's, let's dive in. So per usual, I'm going to use Access, but like I said, this works in any VBA application. I simply imported those same functions from the blog article into a module, and so they're here and accessible. The first one, string pad, you have an input, so the initial string you want to pass to the function that you want to pad. The total length, so how long do you want the output string to be? Which side, so the pad side, do you want to pad the left side or the right side? And then the B truncate. And the truncate simply is used in the case that if you pass a string that is longer than the length desired, it will actually cut the string off at the desired length. So it's going to truncate the input string. Let's do a couple demos here. So if we just start with a simple string pad, we could do something like the following. So as in other videos, I'm adding these quotes with uh, the uh, apostrophe in them just to really demonstrate where there is padding because if I don't have it, then you won't actually know if there are spaces after the string. You'll be taking my word for it. But by adding this here at the beginning and the end, you'll always concretely see the actual result. So I'm going to pass it a string of Toto. And I want the output to be in reality eight characters long. And as you can see, Toto is four characters. I want my output to be eight characters. That's my length. And I'm telling it, pad it on the right side. So if we just run this, you'll see it comes here and it pads Toto on the right side by four characters. So I end up with a string that is eight characters long, just like I asked. Similarly, we could do the same thing but on the left side and the left side is the default so we don't even need to specify it or if you really wanted to you could also come here and do pad left it'd be the same thing at the end of the day and if you run it now it pads it on the left side with a le leading spaces now let's look at this truncate if we take a look at doing something like this. So I'm passing it a long string, but I'm telling it I only want eight characters at the end of the day. Well, don't forget the truncate is by default true. It's going to truncate it at the eight character, leaving us with only an eight character string. However, we can also come here and we could say false, don't truncate. So if I'm giving you something that's too short, you're gonna make it eight. Otherwise, leave it however I give it to you. And in which case, it's just going to return the input string. It won't do anything to it. So that pretty much sums up the string pad function. As you can see, it works great, but it only works by padding with spaces. 
Now let's take a look at our second function, the string pad with character. So it works in the same similar method as the previous function, except this one has the additional input parameter of a S character, the character that you want to pad with. By default, I've set it to a space. So if you use it as is without doing anything, it's going to operate just like the previous function did. However, you can instead tell it to use a specific alternate character. So first, let's take a look at how would it work if we just ran basically the exact same function as we did initially, but with this function instead. And you'll see at the end of the day that you get the exact same value. Like I said, it's going to operate in the same method. And if we just did this, you get the padding on the leading side. So as you can see, it operates the exact same way. But the beauty is when we start using the extra input argument, and we now tell it, instead of using the space, use a star, let's say. Well, now it's going to use stars. And here you could do pad right, and it's going to do the stars on the opposite side. Similarly, just like we had previously seen, you can also use it with the truncate or not. And it's going to operate in the exact same way. And you can also, like I said here, add a padding string, except in this case it won't make a difference because it's being truncated. So you're going to get the same value. And if you say here truncate false, so don't truncate the string if it exceeds the 12 limit that we're looking for, then it just returns the whole string. So that basically shows you the two functions as they work in VBA. The beauty here too is that this works in queries. So let's take a look at that. So let's briefly look at how can we use these functions in a query, or it could even be within a, a form or, or a report. The beauty of when you create a public function is then they become accessible to you throughout the rest of your database, not just VBA. Um, so I just created a very simple query here off of a very simple table. As you can see, sample text table, it has one field where I've just put in some dummy text. So just we're going to use that text to perform some padding on. Then I created a query that simply brings that table in. And by default, I'm going to show you what the full string is. And now let's take a look at actually putting uh, the pad function in. And we can do this very easily. I'm just going to use the zoom box here to try and make it a bit clearer. But as you can see here, we're going to put padded field and we're going to use the string pad the name of the field, so my text, and then the length we want. So let's do the eight again. And the important thing here is previously we would put pad left or pad right, but VBA has access to enums in queries and forms and that they do not. So what you have to remember you have to come back to your VBA for a second. And if you scroll back up to the top to the enum, you'll see here, when I want pad left, I actually have to put one. I have to put the value. And when I want pad right, I have to put two. That's the only thing that changes in the way we call it. So as you saw, I put one. So I'm telling it pad the left side. And if we just do that and run it, you'll see here that in this case, it truncated the super long one because we didn't tell it not to. And it added a padding of four characters on the second one. Let's take a look. We'll copy this guy. And let's take a look at changing the one to a two. So I'm padding it on the right side. And let's run it and see the difference. Will we see a difference? Well, here you're clearly seeing it. It's cutting it from, like we said, the right side and cutting it off properly at eight characters. And if you click here, you'll see there are extra characters indeed. So it is working. We could similarly copy this again. And we could say here not to truncate, right?
and run it. And in that case, it doesn't truncate the field. So that would be using the string pad. Let's look at the string pad with character. And it operates in the exact same manner. Remember, it's the exact, it uses the same enum. The only difference is we can specify a character. So let's come in into our uh, query. Let's clear this out for a second. Let's come back here and zoom boxes and you can see what I'm doing. All we do is replace the name of the function. So now we're using the string pad with character. And if we use it as is and run it, you're going to get the same result. Nothing's changed yet. Okay, so we have this different function, but it gives the same output, which is perfect because it defaults to using a space. Now let's take copy and paste it. All right, let's zoom box it again for you. But this time, let's add, the, no, we don't want a space. We want to use a star. And we run it. And now it becomes very evident that it padded. Same thing. Let's copy this guy. And let's change the 1 to a 2. So we're padding on the right side this time. Change the name and run it. And you'll see that, indeed, it's padding it from the right side. The exact same thing is true again. We can come here, copy this, and this time we can tell it not to truncate, right? Just change the name of the field so we don't get any errors and run it. And it, similarly to the string pad, now that we told it not to truncate, it will return the full length. So, that is string padding and what you've seen here will work in forms reports queries and as you saw earlier vba so we saw two very simple similar functions um, but the string pad with character at the end of the day i think is the winner because it does everything uh, you can pad with a space or an alternate character so that's the one i use personally and it's very useful, actually, when outputting information to the immediate window, uh, generating text files, uh, even in emails, where you can use it to align the information you're outputting, and it makes it much more legible. Um, we'll uh, leave it at that for today. I hope it's useful to some of you out there. A uh, special thanks to David Martin. Um, he originally sent me a comment when I first published the article. And uh, I hadn't completed the function 100%, and he gave me a bit of a kick in the ass to, to dot the I's and cross the T's and just add the extra functionality that is now there and makes it a much more robust and complete function. So thank you, David. If you don't mind giving a thumbs up, subscribing, if you're able to push, publicize my videos or channel in any way, whether it be on your networks, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it may be, we greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.